Hey, friend, Chris Vandiver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you how you can use smart controls to automatically compensate for any volume adjustments that might occur from plugins that you're using to mix your tracks. For example, plugins like compressors, limiters, distortion plugins inevitably are going to change the volume of our tracks. Compressors tend to make things quieter. Distortion plugins tend to make things louder. And these level adjustments can mess with our perception of how we are mixing our tracks. Our subconscious tends to think that louder is better and that quieter is not as good. And in fact, let me just demonstrate it right now. Let's open this compressor on this drummer track. And as I reduce the threshold, we'll hear the drummer track get quieter as a result. Bump this up a bit. Take a listen. That's a pretty healthy dose of compression. Let's hear before and after as I remove the plugin from the chain and then reintroduce it. And as you can hear, the drums get quieter as a result. So it's up to us, the user, to adjust the output gain to best match the best we can the before and after. So we're only hearing just the effect of the compressor and not the effect of the volume change. Let's take a listen. One of my dream features that I'm hoping for in one of the next Logic updates is a true auto gain compensation for all of the EQs, the compressor, all the dynamic plugins. So instead of you and I having to manually adjust the gain, instead the plugin would just do it for us. Of course, you might say, well, Chris, the compressor has an auto gain function right here. But in my opinion, it's not a true one to one auto gain. In fact, let's just set it to zero dB and reduce the threshold. And just take a listen to how quickly this drum track is gonna get really loud as I adjust the threshold. Take a listen. I mean, that is not auto gain as I know it. So instead we're gonna program our own smart controls to do this for us. So we are adjusting multiple parameters of a plugin with one smart control. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna start out with the limiter because I think this will be the best way to illustrate what I'm talking about. We're gonna open up the smart controls. And for drummer tracks, these already come with their own smart controls pre-mapped for things like the kick level or the snare level or introducing reverb. I'm gonna open the inspector and I'm gonna go to the settings for this parameter mapping and I'm going to delete all the patch mappings. And now I've cleared the deck so I can start mapping my own smart controls as I would like to see them. I'm also going to change the look of these smart controls to something like General Audio 12, and I'm going to select the first smart control that's unmapped. We get this blue halo to let us know that it's the control that's in focus for mapping. And if we go over here to the parameter mapping, I'm going to select Learn. The smart control is going to turn red to let us know that it's ready to learn a particular parameter. And I'm going to just click on the output level. All right, so now the output level is set to this smart control. And as we adjust the smart control, we're adjusting the output level on the limiter. From here, I wanna set the gain parameter so it's also assigned to the same exact smart control. And you'll see why in just a moment here. I'm gonna go back right over here to the settings and add a mapping. I'm gonna make sure that the unmapped is highlighted, click learn, then click on the gain control. So now both the gain and the output level are assigned to the same smart control. Now we need to just specify a couple things about each parameter so that when I adjust the output level, as I decrease it, the gain goes up to compensate. So the level stays exactly the same no matter where we set it. So I'm gonna click on the output level over here in the parameter mapping. I'm gonna set the maximum of the range to zero dB so that no matter where I set this, the output level at its very top will only go to zero and not to one. I'm gonna set the bottom of the range to negative nine. And for the gain control, I'm going to set the range minimum to zero dB and the maximum to 10 dB. But there's one more piece to this puzzle. As I adjust the smart control, both the output level and gain are being reduced together. And that's not what I want. So for the limiter gain here, I'm gonna make sure to invert the selection. So as we drive this down now, 
the gain goes up as the output ceiling goes down. And now the level should remain consistent as we start to limit this drum track. Take a listen. Now I'll bypass the plugin and reintroduce it. Take a listen. The kick gets a little boomier without the limiter, but the level's generally about the same. And now we're listening to only the effect of the limiter and not the effect of any volume adjustments. I mean, it's pretty awesome that you can do this all with one control. Let me now demonstrate this with the overdrive plugin. So with the overdrive plugin, again, we have this level compensation, but check it out. As I drive the distortion, take a listen to the track as it gets louder instead of being completely the same level all the time. Again, not ideal. So I'm gonna select the second smart control and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna learn, we're gonna select drive, we're gonna add a mapping, make sure to highlight it, learn, output. Perfect, so now we're all set to map these two. In this case, I'm only going to adjust the output level. The drive has a range from zero dB to 24 dB. I'm gonna set the range a little different, negative 20, to maybe about negative two. And let's see what this brings us. As I drive this up, you can see again, they're both being boosted. So let's make sure to invert the selection for the output. And now they're roughly about the same. Take a listen. And just like that, we've now compensated for the boost from the drive of the overdrive by having the output reduced at the same time at a relative level or range. I couldn't do exactly, you know, zero to 24 in a mirror image from, you know, 24 to zero or whatever. I just slightly adjust the range so it sounded about the same, though it might not be exactly the same numerical values. Let's now do the same thing with the compressor. The compressor is kind of tough because the changes are not exactly linear in terms of the threshold and the output gain. So I'm going to select the unmapped. I'm going to learn the threshold. We'll add a mapping and then we'll learn the output gain. In this case, we're going to set the output gain so that the bottom of the range is zero, which is right here. And we're going to set the maximum to about 15 dB. And we're also going to open the scaling option. I'm going to set the scaling so that it's inverted like so. So as you can see, as we adjust the threshold, we can see that the gain is starting to go up as the threshold goes down. It's kind of like inverting it, but you can see that it's not just a consistent one-to-one -one sort of thing. You can see it's stepping up in value. Instead, it ramps up more exponential way. So let's now hear how this sounds. Let's close this up and let's take a listen to what this might sound like as we start to compress our track more and the output gain is boosted. Take a listen. Now, I forgot to turn off the auto gain, so let's do that. And let's now compare before and after. Pretty awesome. Now this doesn't take into consideration things like attack and release and knee, which can also change the level of the compressor. If you, you know, reduce the attack, it could make it quieter. Let's give it a try. Not too bad, but some of these other parameters might also create level adjustments. But nonetheless, you can see here that with smart controls, you can map these parameters, multiple parameters to a single smart control, and then invert these parameters so they move in different directions relative to each other. You can set a minimum and maximum range. Really fantastic. 
The only other detail here is that, you know, you'll have to set up these smart controls every time you load a compressor or an overdrive or limiter. Instead of doing that, if you have plugins that you use all the time, I would save a channel strip setting with all of this stuff mapped out. Have all of your smart controls mapped out with your plugins that you prefer to use nine times out of 10. Go over here to the settings on the channel strip and go to save channel strip setting as. Save that channel strip and then every time you load it, it will be loaded with these smart controls in place. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.